Good afternoon and welcome. The Allied Chiefs of Defence and I have just concluded a military committee meeting. A month away from NATO's Allied Heads of State and Government Summit, there are many topics requiring our attention, advice and guidance. The military committee's work ensures our political leadership is advised on all military options and is able to take the necessary political decisions to guarantee NATO's core mandate, which is the collective security of our 30 nations. Today's discussion focused on NATO's 2030, NATO's military strategic planning, adaptation, NATO-led operations, missions and activities, as well as our close partnerships with Ukraine and Georgia. We are joined by the Secretary-General Jens Stoltenberg in our first session of the day. He informed the Military Committee on progress related to NATO 2030 and the main political issues in the lead-up to the summit. The Allied Chiefs of Defence enthusiastically welcome the NATO 2030 agenda, which underpins the work of NATO's military authorities. Following the agreement and adoption of our military strategy in 2019, we are bringing to operational life two key supporting concepts. The concept for deterrence and defence of the Euro-Atlantic area, developed by the Supreme Allied Commander for Europe, General Todd Walters, which focuses on military requirements we need to deter and defend today and the NATO warfighting capstone concept developed by our Supreme Allied Commander for Transformation, General Andre Lanata, offers a vision to guide the Alliance's long-term defence development to remain militarily strong in the future. In recent years, the Alliance has undertaken a huge programme of adaptation with more modern investments, modern capabilities and increased readiness for our forces. To prepare for the future and in order to guide the Alliance's long-term military development, the effects of climate change need to be considered. Climate change will impact our lives in many ways, but crucially for the military committee, we're focused on how it affects common security. The Allied Chiefs recommended a survey on the impacts of climate change and possible consequences across the Allied Alliance's national armed forces. From there, the military authorities can further integrate climate change issues and considerations into military planning and exercises. Chiefs of Defence welcomed the Secretary-General's call for NATO to remain strong militarily and discussed how the development of a new strategic concept could affect Allied military planning. Every day across the Alliance and further afield, our forces on duty, protecting and defending our citizens and our territory in NATO on operations and missions. The military committee received operational intelligence updates and exchange views on the current change challenges facing the Alliance. We focused the two missions, NATO-led and missions in Afghanistan and in Iraq. Through our near 20-year engagement in Afghanistan, we've helped to build the Afghan security forces and they have now taken the lead in providing security across their country. We welcomed the US-Taliban agreement and the US-Afghanistan joint declaration in 2020, and the Alliance has gradually adjusted our troop presence as part of the peace process. We've long recognized that there can be no military solution to the challenges Afghanistan faces, and in the light of the US decision to draw down, NATO allied decided to start the withdrawal of the Resolute Support Mission Forces. The Chiefs of Defense recognized the challenges involved in this drawdown, commended the operational planning going into the process and discussed the way ahead. Standing together, thousands of our troops from allied and partner nations and from Afghanistan have paid the price. We owe a huge debt to all those who've served. Our mission in Afghanistan has shaped and strengthened the ability of our troops to work together, including in the fight against terrorism. And as allies, we continue to consult closely on our future engagement with Afghanistan. In Iraq, in close co coordination with the Iraqi government, NATO is enhancing our presence with our training mission. The expansion of our mission uh, will be incremental. It will be based on the requirements and consent from the Iraqi authorities and the conditions on the ground, and in full respect of Iraq's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Advising, training, capacity building activities will now include more Iraqi security inst institutions and areas in and beyond Baghdad. Our presence is conditions-based as the mission's enhancement, which will be gradual and demand-driven. But NATO's presence in Iraq is a key contribution in the fight against international terrorism to support Iraqi government forces as they fight terrorism and ensure that ISIS does not return. 
NATO has over 40 partners across the world, from the Middle East and North Africa to the Asia Pacific, South America and Europe. Each partnership is unique and we tailor our support to meet each partner's specific requirements and needs. Today's complex security environment has seen an increase in global security challenges. These cannot be solved by any one nation alone. The Alliance is a strong supporter of greater global and transatlantic cooperation. This afternoon, the Allied Chiefs of Defence met with their Ukrainian and Georgian counterparts. Russia continues to demonstrate a sustained pattern of destabilising behaviour, including its violations of Ukraine and Georgian sovereignty and territorial integrity. Talking to General Komchak, the military committee discussed the situation in and around Ukraine and armed forces defence reform in Ukraine. The chiefs of defence of, of the alliance reiterated their full support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity and discussed future cooperation in and around the Black Sea. The military committee encouraged Ukraine to continue implementing major reforms to build security and development for all Ukrainians. Turning to Georgia, the military committee met with General Matthias Vili. NATO's partnership with Georgia remains strong and close with Georgia's contribution to our shared security. Georgia has been a very important contributor to our resolute support mission in Afghanistan and participated in the NATO response force. Through our cooperation over the years, Georgian forces have increased their capabilities and become more effective. We maintain a strong level of practical cooperation, including support from our NATO liaison office in Tbilisi and the activities of our NATO Joint Training and Evaluation Centre. Through our updated substantial NATO Georgia packet, which was adopted last November, there's a more ambition, ambitious cooperation is planned, including the implementation of Secure Communications Project, a NATO or Georgia exercise in 2022, and enhanced cooperation on maritime issues and situation awareness. NATO is a learning organisation and always leads by example. As I announced today, the title of Chairman of the military, NATO Military Committee will now be replaced by the title Chair. Noting the power of words, the Military Committee underlines that there are no gender barriers when it comes to holding the position of chair. This gender-neutral term is applicable not only to the chair but to the deputy chair position as well. This announcement is supported by a range of work by the NATO military authorities and our gender advisers. And over 60 years since the first NATO conference of senior service women officers took place in June 1961. Developing and maintaining high standards for ourselves is crucial and encouraging high standards in other militaries around the world is important. Advancing the integration of women into our national armed forces and incorporating gender perspectives into our own strategic, operational, tactical level strengthens the performance and operational effectiveness of the alliance. 55% of NATO nations have women generals. 60% of NATO member nations have their own national gender training program. 70% of nations have gender advisors. 85% of NATO nations have all military positions open to women. And 96% of NATO member nations import, incorporate gender perspectives into their training. And we all use NATO certified gender training. So, coordination with the NATO Strategic Command, Centre of Excellence and Department Heads is key to ensure all of our members have the appropriate tools to enhance their understanding and the importance and relevance of integrating a gender perspective into their daily work. We've made progress, but there's more to do. NATO's policy on gender equality and gender inclusiveness has three key principles. Integration, inclusiveness and integrity. NATO is committed to diversity and inclusion, regardless of gender, race, sexual orientation or background. I personally like for everybody who has the opportunity to raise awareness on the gender perspective to do so. So please seize these opportunities and set an example. The core principle of the Washington Treaty remains as relevant and meaningful as it was when drafted in 1949. We are stronger together. Thank you.